This plastinated specimen is located at the Munn Faculty of Medicine. I dissected this specimen to show the ligaments attached to the coracoid process, the rotator cuff muscles, and some other related structures. For orientation, we are looking at the anterior aspect of the right shoulder. Here is the medial border of the scapula. This is the cut edge of the clavicle. Here is the tip of the coracoid process, and that is the acromion. This ligament, which is extending from the coracoid process to the acromion, is the acromioclavicular ligament. Extending from the coracoid process to the undersurface of the clavicle is the coracoclavicular ligament, and you can see its two parts, two separate parts, one here and one over here. This here is a muscle called the subclavius, which is on the undersurface of the clavicle, a small muscle, and it acts as a cushion for this neurovascular bundle as it enters the axilla. I will next describe the rotator cuff or the sits muscles. They are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. They are all extend from the scapula into the tubercles of the humerus. This one here is the subscapularis, which fills the subscapular fossa. It goes beneath these neurovascular sub structures and inserts into the lesser tubercle of the humerus. It is supplied by the upper and the lower subscapular nerves. It adducts the arm. Just before its insertion, part of this muscle has been resected. So if you look closely, you can see the head of the humerus through that. As I rotate the uh, specimen, you can see the spine of the scapula. Above the spine, filling this fossa is the supraspinatus. The middle section of the supraspinatus has been resected. The supraspinatus goes beneath this arch, which is formed by the acromion and the coracoacromial ligament to insert here onto the greater tubercle of the humerus. This and this are the cut ends of the infraspinatus below the spine of the scapula. The infraspinatus inserts into the middle facet of the greater tubercle. Here is the suprascapular nerve. The suprascapular nerve comes and supplies the supraspinatus over here. Then it goes around the spinoglenoid notch and supplies the infraspinatus. Do you recall which part of the brachial plexus this nerve arises from? It comes from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, and its root value is C5-6, meaning that the fibers contained in this nerve originate from the fifth and sixth cervical segments of the spinal cord. This here is the teres minor. The minor inserts onto the lower facet of the greater tubercle and also to some extent onto the humerus itself. This is supplied by the branch of the axillary nerve that you can see right over here. The action of the teres minor and the infraspinatus is to laterally rotate the arm. By the way, the supraspinatus muscle initiates abduction. This here is the long head of triceps. Note how this long head of triceps separates the teres minor from the teres major. Teres means round. Though both these muscles come from the lateral border of the scapula, their actions are very different. We've already said the teres minor laterally rotates the arm. 
whereas the teres major, because of the way that it goes anteriorly and then inserts onto the humerus, medially rotates the arm. Here are the edges of the uh, levator scapulae and the rhomboids. This is the lateral head of the triceps muscle right here. As I turn it laterally, you can see the cut edge of the deltoid. The deltoid is inserted into the shaft of the humerus mid shaft on the lateral side. I am now tracing the long head of the biceps as that is located in this intertubercular groove or the bicipital groove and it is coming down right here is the belly of the biceps. Taking origin from the coracoid process is the short head of biceps and the coracobrachialis. Inserting onto the coracoid is the pectoralis minor. Note how these two roots of the median nerve are hugging the axillary artery which is lying right here and all this is the median nerve. Lying medial to this nerve is the ulnar nerve and I now have the ulnar nerve over my pointer. This is the cut edge of the pectoralis major and here is the tendon of the latissimus dorsi as it is overlying the teres major. You can also see some of the branches uh, of the axillary artery. Right here, the short trunk is the thoracoacromial artery. This one here, a much smaller one and the larger one, these are the two circumflex humeral arteries. The posterior circumflex humeral over here is much larger and is accompanied by the axillary nerve. This by the way, and you can perhaps see it better as I turn this, this here is the profunda brachii artery. It is a branch of the brachial artery and this accompanies the radial nerve. By the way, the brachial artery begins at the lower border of teres major by the change in name of the axillary artery. The axillary becomes brachial at that point. Did you notice my mistake in naming one of the ligaments attached to the coracoid process? The ligament connecting the coracoid process to the acromion is called the coracoacromial ligament. What is the function of the rotator cuff muscles? It is to keep the head of the humerus in the glenoid fossa and prevent the capsule from being pinched during movements at the shoulder. I dissected this specimen to show the muscles attached to the scapula and the proximal humerus as well as some of the nerves and blood vessels. Right here is the suprascapular nerve and it is going deep to this ligament which is the transverse scapular ligament to enter the suprascapular fossa, supply the supraspinatus and then go through the spinoglenoid notch to supply the infraspinatus. This is the deltoid which has been cut from its origin and you can see how it surrounds the shoulder as a cape. This is where it was attached to the clavicle, the acromion and the spine of the scapula. It is supplied by the axillary nerve as you know and it is the middle fibers of the deltoid which abduct the arm. The anterior and the posterior fibers of the deltoid stabilize the arm. 
it is the posterior fibers of the deltoid which can also laterally rotate the arm. Do you recall the other two muscles which laterally rotate the arm? Yes, they are the infraspinatus and the teres minor over here, the parts of the rotator cuff muscles. This here is part of the trapezius. The rest of the trapezius which was inserted along the spine of the scapula, the acromion and the clavicle has been removed. The insertion of trapezius closely corresponds the origin of deltoid. Remember it is the trapezius along with the serratus anterior which rotate the scapula and thus enable the deltoid to abduct the arm more than 90 degrees. This here is part of the rhomboids, so also this whereas at this upper border, upper part here is the uh, levator scapulae. This is the cut edge of the infraspinatus and that is the teres major. The teres minor which was attached along here has been removed completely. This here is the long head of triceps as it originates from the infraglenoid tubercle. This blood vessel that you can see here, this artery, that is the branch of the suprascapular artery accompanying the suprascapular nerve. This artery is a branch of the subclavian. Coming along here from this side and you see part of it over here is the circumflex scapular artery. The circumflex scapular artery is a branch of subscapular which is a branch of the axillary. There is an anastomosis around the scapula between these branches of the subclavian on one hand and axillary on the other. You can see part of the capsule of the shoulder joint has been removed, so you can see the head of the humerus along there. This muscle in the middle is the lady between two majors. This is the tendon of the latissimus dorsi close to its insertion. Lying on its lateral side is the pectoralis major and on the medial side is located the teres major. Going down here in between is the, like this uh, pointer, is the long head of biceps. Most of the serratus anterior insertion along this medial border of the scapula has been removed except for this little bit which is left remaining close to the inferior angle. A lot of the serratus anterior was also inserted along this upper part. I did not point out the radial nerve. I suggest you review it on your own and note it branches to the triceps. Also note that the axillary nerve is closely related to the neck of the humerus. Hence, it is the axillary nerve which is most likely to be injured in the fracture of the neck of the humerus.